an unlicensed product, which a lot of people have either seen or just heard about but don't know a lot about, and that's our P2P24. Now, this operates in the unlicensed 24 gig band. There's roughly um, 100 megahertz in both transmit and receive on this band that you can use. And what this means is you can run these radios in this unlicensed band, and this is basically a 100 meg full duplex radio. So 100 megs one way, 100 megs at the same time, basically like connecting the Ethernet. Um, you also have the addition to add in four T1s or E1s, and that rides on top. So if you're completely you know, running at full bore with the Ethernet, and you're getting a true throughput of 108 megs. But if T1s right on top and don't interfe or interfere with what your actual Ethernet speeds are, the TDM stuff is a different setup on top. Now, what I like to tell people with the hardware and the way this is set up is basically like this is a licensed link radio that runs in the unlicensed band. So you're going to get that same type of performance for speed, latency, and packet per second count that you're going to get on any licensed link. So we're talking, you know, under one millisecond latency. 100,000 or even more packets per second. Our little tester sort of freaks out when trying to run it, so we know it's more than 100. Um, one thing to keep in mind when you are using 24 gig is that it does have a reduced out, or not a reduced, but it has fairly low output power when compared to uh, a lot of the other products. So we're talking, you know, max power is you know three to five dB, depending on where you are and the channel sizes and modulations you're running. So. Um, Typically, in the States, we say you know, up to about five miles where you use links, and it really depends on where your rain zone. I've run links out in the deserts, out in Nevada and stuff, that were pushing eight miles, and they work really well. Um, some areas down in Florida, we can only get two or three miles before we run out of uh, throughput when the rain hits. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail later when we talk about the link planner. We've got couple of different setups. We've got the US or the ANSI setup, which is 5, 10, 20, or 30 megahertz channels. And we've got the Etsy setup for mainly Europe, a lot of South American countries and stuff like that. Other parts of the world rely on the Etsy standard. So we have that both in terms of throughput, or sorry, output powers and different modulation rates and different channel sizes. Antenna selection, we have a one-foot antenna and a two-foot antenna available. Uh, it's a slit-fit antenna, so basically the ODU, which is pictured here on the slide, bolts directly on the back of the antenna. So no flexible waveguide, no coax or anything like that. Basically, PUE runs to the radio, bolts directly on the back of the antenna, and you're done. It's a real sturdy, heavy-duty setup. And the one-foot antenna is 35 dBi, and the two-foot antenna is 40 dBi. So these are good when you're running your link out so you can map out what you actually need for a link. If there's ever any question, of course, go bigger. A bigger antenna is always more helpful. Next product we're going to discuss here is our P2P620S. This is our licensed product. We started shipping this at the beginning of this year. Um, we've not done a ton of advertising or marketing on that um, just because a lot of it's us testing everything out, learning how to support the gear, learning how to sell the gear because this is our first licensed product. But things have been working out really well. Streetway has been doing a really good job of getting these out the door and uh, giving us a lot of good feedback and everything. We've been very happy with how the system's been working out. Now this setup is a split system. So basically what you see is at the bottom, that's the indoor IDU indoor unit, and then the ODU up top, which is your outdoor unit. And the way it works is you plug all your data and stuff in your HUD inside, run your coax cable from that end connector up your tower to the ODU. ODU is, again, it's a slip-fit ODU that bolts onto the back of the antenna. Now, you can get, use an LMR 400, you're good for about 200 meters or so, or, you know, six, 700 feet, basically. After, but if you use uh, between the IDU and the ODU, so you can really get some height on it. If you use lower loft cable, you can actually push that further. So um, this system is a 620S because it's a 620 aggregate, or basically 310 megs full duplex. We've actually just had a firmware release that has actually pushed that up to about 325 megs using the biggest channel and the fastest modulation rate. So these numbers are a little out of date. Um, very cost-effective system that we're running, and one of the nice things about these systems is that basically we, you get the whole package when you buy the unit. So you get all your power supplies and everything all come with it. It comes fully licensed, so you don't have to buy any goofy upgrade keys or anything like that. So when you get the unit, all you basically need is your coax and your cat5, and it's fully licensed. It's going to run full bore, so as long as you plan the link properly, it's going to run as fast as the unit can run. So 
But one thing to keep in mind when you're pricing things out is, you know, make sure all the accessories and everything come with it. It's really important. Now, we select a wide frequency range from 7 to 23 gigahertz, and actually we just added 26 gigahertz for some international locations. But typically what you'll see in the U.S. is uh, 11 and 18 and some 23. But mainly what we're using is 11 and 23. We do have some 7 and 8 gig available for government and stuff like that. But typically your, you know, your big hitters in the States, that's what we keep on stock. We keep everything on hand for those, so there is no two or three month delay on most of the stuff. So. You order it, you're ready to go, everything will be up and ready even before you get your license and you can run with it. Uh, we have a wide mix of channel sizes, uh, all the way from 3.5 megahertz to 56, different channel plans and channel sizes depending on which region you're in. All these specs can be found on the spec sheet on our website too, so you can get all the really fun numbers. It does support ACM. As a hitless ACM, so if your link can modulate down or you know you set it up to modulate down, it'll do that. Five minutes of clear running, it'll go ahead and move back up, which is a really efficient process and something we've noticed on our link, our beta link. We've been running here for about a year, a year and a couple months, so it's one thing we've tested out heavily and it's been working really well. Um, one nice thing about the IDU ODU type of setup is that we can store, we basically have one IDU that you can use across all the different frequencies. So if you've got a couple of different frequencies out for IDUs, you can just stock one device. And for ODUs, of course, you would need to spare the high or low in the band that you need. So, But being able to stock just the one IDU is a really cost-effective stocking spare solution. Um, and it's got all your typical fun stuff. This is a different GUI setup than the other products, but it's got all your typical fun stuff like SNMP support and reporting and everything like that. Real basic type of setup, not a whole lot to it. Um, you're setting the frequency modulation rate and going. You can also set all your VLAN stuff. If you want to get more in detail, all your VLAN, you're splitting between the management ports and so on and so forth. So all that information is in the manual. We do have an optional T1E1 circuit for this as well. You can put in the expansion card is cost-effective, cheap little card you plug in, and it will give you the option to run up to two T1 or E1 circuits, depending on your region. Now, we're going to show some pictures here, some different deployments, because pictures are fun, and uh, it's kind of cool to see this stuff deployed all over the world. These pictures actually come from our Facebook site. Uh, we had a contest to give cool install pictures and gave away some radios recently. So. If you're into Facebook, uh, just look and check us out. You can search for Legal Wave and see there's product announcements we do, different contests and fun stuff like that. So here's the single pole, your typical first-gen units you'll see installed here in Columbia. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, again, Tasmania. One thing I want to point out, this is our 620 system. If you look on the left-hand side, at the bottom it's paired up with another one, but that's actually behind a billboard. Uh, they had to hide this link. So they suck it in the inner workings of a billboard setup, shooting through that little uh, display board or whatever you want to call it. It's working real well for them. But the thing I'd like to point out is you can see how the slip fit works. I believe that's a four foot, two foot. I'm not entirely sure. I can't gauge distance very well. But, but you can see basically how the unit just bolts directly onto the back of that, how the mounting brackets and whatnot work. So pretty neat little setup there. Uh, some units we have in the Philippines. Again, this is our single pole setup. Here's our Mexico setup. You'll see an example. This is our dual pole MIMO unit using the dual pole dishes. This is where we've done a lot of our long distance testing. You can see them shooting off to the mountain. This is where we've been pushing the MIMO platforms up to 60, 70 miles to really max out what we can do with it. Um, you'll need to run those really long distances. I would like to note you need to run the 6.7 version of the software. It's a new release. It's actually a public beta that we're working on right now. You can download it directly off our website and there's a lot of information gathering. We made a lot of different timing changes and stuff to max out some extra performance parameters and we're just making sure everyone was real happy with it before we launch. So it's a good way to get feedback from everyone in that development cycle. This is our Irish guys, very patriotic. Uh, this is our 523 MIMO unit. You can see the size of the 23 DBI integrated antenna. And that's enough picture time. So now I'd like to quickly talk about some upcoming products. Um, the next release will be our second generation MIMO. Now what this is, a lot of the stuff's the same, like the main radio parameters and stuff are the same. 
Uh, we did bump up the throughput to 190 megs, but the main changes we're doing here are we're adding some pre-processing control boards to it. And what this is going to allow us to do is, is to add in some other features. Uh, it's going to allow us to run our packets per second count, which is you know, 35 or 50, depending on the model. This is going to push it up to about 90,000 packets per second, maybe even more. That 90 was just a preload number I'm running with. But um, it looks like it may be a little bit more. But 90,000 packets per second over a 5 gigahertz link is a really you know, kind of a big deal in terms of throughput, especially for backhauling a ton of VoIP stuff. We're going to um, add in some different sort of pack rate aggregation that we're doing. Um, basically doubling up what we're able to currently run. We're going to add in full QoS support, so COS, QoS, DSCP, and all that sort of fun stuff. That'll all be able to be added to this. It'll also be able to give us the ability to run uh, all sorts of different bandwidth controls. So, you know, hard setting which limit you want to run on one or the other, um, doing some VLAN bandwidth controls and stuff like that. And it also allows us to run some different data compression. So. The actual raw wireless part of it is going to stay the same, but with all this pre-processing and stuff like that, we're able to really squeeze a ton more performance out of what we've been able to do so far. So we're pretty excited about that. We expect this probably the first quarter of next year, um, sometime during the first quarter. I'm not going to make any hard quotes on time because I always get beat up when something I do that. So I'm just going to STF you right now. Uh, here's a really exciting product. This is our third generation point to point. And what this is is a MIMO platform, but it's actually built on a proprietary WiMAX core. Um, and what we've done is we've taken a lot of the cool WiMAX stuff and left it in there, but stripped out a lot of the, the junk that people get frustrated with, provisioning, all sorts of stuff like that. It's basically gutted. We kept all the core stuff that everyone really likes. So the first release will be 2.3 to 2.7 gig, so the wideband 2 gigahertz. 3 gigahertz, and the big one will be 5 gigahertz. One, you know, we'll see the most use of in the U.S. at least. It will have the option for uh, point to point will be the primary usage role, but it'll also support point to few points. And this is a one to three. So basically, what that means is, if you want to install three separate links and they're all basically in the same direction, then as long as you make the antennas work out, you can run one master and three slaves to this, and you'll split the bandwidth across. You know all three of those, but in areas where you need a handful of 20 meg links or 30 meg links or something like that, and they're all shooting back to the same point, this allows you to do it with four radios instead of six. So nice savings of money, management, stuff like that. Now, what I think is the most important part of this whole little demonstration or talk, discussion about this product, is you'll notice that it's running 90 megabits per second in the 10 megahertz channel. Uh, actually, it's pushing a little bit closer to 100 in the lab right now. So um, the distance tests and stuff are working out really well, too. So to me, you know, that's a, a really important sort of thing to notice. You're pulling that kind of bandwidth in the 10 megs channel. Like, it's incredibly spectrally efficient. And especially as the 5 gig band is getting thrashed out in so many places, you're trying to do so much on the 5 gig band, then you know this is really important for your planning and stuff, being able to stack things up like that. Yeah, and it's running a 256 QAM, and versus 64 QAM in our current MIMO products and stuff, this high speed by running 256 QAM is what's really allowing us to push this through. So, a couple of different channel sizes, 10 meg will be the max. Um, we're not running any larger than that just because of the speeds that we are getting are so good, and there's no real reason to run bigger in this gives us the ability to stack things a lot deeper than, you know, consuming the entire band like you would in a 40 megahertz channel or something like that. Um, 100,000 packets per second, 70 miles distance. Um, they'll have full QoS support, bandwidth control, uh, automatic transmit power, and receive gain control, which is pretty nifty.